Michael Burry's predictions tend to come true, and his latest is worrisome. Now, he says that financial markets are facing another dangerous bubble. In a recent tweet, he said, The difference between now and 2000 is the passive investing bubble that inflated steadily over the last decade. All theatres are overcrowded, and the only way anyone can get out is by trampling over each other. And still, the door is only so big. Bury is right about the downsides and risks of passive investing. As more and more money pours into index tracking funds, should investors be worried? Keep watching until the end of this video to see Michael Burry's warning for the index fund bubble in 2023. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. In this video, I'll share the basics of passive investing, how Burry's theories come into play, what causes the changes in stock prices, whether passive investing can cause a bubble, and what if the market does crash. Let's dive right into it. An index fund is a type of exchange-traded fund, or ETF, with a portfolio constructed to match or track the components of a financial market index. For instance, the biggest index fund in the whole world is SPY, which is a Standard & Poor's or S&P 500 index fund. The S&P 500 index tracks the performance of 500 of the largest US public companies by market capitalization, or the total value of their publicly traded outstanding shares. It means your investments are tied to the performance of a wide range of companies. Index funds make money by earning a return. They're designed to match the returns of their underlying stock market index, which is diversified enough to avoid major losses and perform well. Passive investing is a long-term strategy for building wealth by buying securities that mirror stock market indexes, then holding them long-term, whereby investors purchase a representative benchmark, such as the S&P 500 index, and hold it over a long-time horizon. The average annualized return since its inception in 1923 through December 31, 2021 is 11.82%. The average annualized return since adopting 500 stocks into the index in 1957 through December 31, 2021 is 11.88%. And the average company in the S&P 500 had around 21.2% of its stock owned by passive vehicles such as index tracking ETFs and mutual funds by the end of March. The primary idea of passive investing in 2022 is putting money into the SPY ETF and low-cost S&P 500 index mutual funds. According to Bloomberg, approximately 21.2% of all the S&P 500 company shares are now held inside passive funds contrasting to only 3.3% in 2003. This generation has gotten very comfortable dollar cost averaging into the stock market using these funds with the belief that they'll always go higher over time. But the S&P 500 has averaged approximately 12% annual returns over its history along the 50% drawdowns. The long S&P 500 investment may have become crowded at this point, and it takes continuous buying power to keep it up at current price levels. By the way, do you want to stay updated about Michael Burry's relevance in the market dynamics? Then give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. It really helps me to grow the channel and bring you the best content about investing. The big short hedge fund manager Michael Burry cautioned that he sees another significant risk to market stability in the form of a passive investing bubble that he expects to burst. He analogizes the current state of affairs in index investing to the mortgage bond market in 2007. Burry has been especially vocal in recent days about his distaste for passive investing. Just last week, he called it a bubble that ignores small cap stocks. That has, in turn, piqued his interest in small caps as a ripe investing opportunity. Like most bubbles, the longer it goes on, the worse the crash will be, Burry said in the email to Bloomberg. Although Burry's fame originated from a short trade, he told Bloomberg last week that he was more interested in long-oriented investing in undervalued and overlooked situations. His firm recently revealed large active investments in three small-cap companies in the US and South Korea. By Burry's reckoning, the rise of index funds has resulted in a deterioration of the market's ability to serve its crucial function as a vehicle for price discovery. Whenever markets turn bearish, Michael Burry is a name that investors turn to, and for good reason. But it's important to note that during the summer, Burry actually turned bullish towards growth stocks. He thought they would rise in the second half of the year due to disinflation. 
Michael Burry believes that passive and blind investing in index fund is destroying the proper functioning of a market based on valuations, earnings, and future cash flow. True value is no longer priced based on fundamentals. Another signal of a bubble. He says passive investing has removed price discovery from the equity markets. The simple theses and the models that get people into sectors, factors, indexes, or ETFs and mutual funds mimicking those strategies do not require the security level analysis that's required for true price discovery. He first referred to the trend as a bubble in a November 2019 interview with Bloomberg, arguing the passive strategy was causing investors to miss opportunities to do their own research and capitalize on overlooked stocks. In the short term, stocks go up and down because of supply and demand. Billions of shares of stock are bought and sold every day, and it's this buying and selling that sets stock prices. Understanding supply and demand is easy. What's difficult to comprehend is what makes people like a particular stock and dislike another stock. This comes down to figuring out what news is positive for a company and what news is negative. There are many answers to this problem, and just about any investor you ask has their own ideas and strategies. Because the stock market functions as an auction when there are more buyers than there are sellers, the price has to adapt or no trades will be made. This situation tends to drive the price upward, increasing the market quotation at which investors can sell their shares and enticing investors to sell when they had previously not been interested in selling. On the other hand, when sellers outnumber buyers and there is less demand, whoever's willing to take the lowest bid sets the price, resulting in a race to the bottom. Confidence in the stock market can also push up demand and prices for individual stocks. If investors believe that stocks are a good investment, either because valuations are attractive or because the stock market has been trending upwards, an increase in demand for stocks can push up prices across the board. Over the past two decades, investors have been switching from buying actively managed investment funds to buying passive funds that simply track a market. Surprisingly, the aggregate assets invested in index-based funds surpassed actively managed equity funds, and that's affected how the markets work. If the price discovery mechanism is overridden by models and capital flows, it can result in cascading systemic problems. That could be bad news for everyone, not merely those with heavy exposure to index funds or exchange-traded funds like the SPDR S&P 500 ETF Trust, or SPY. While value investors might, at first glance, like the idea of exploiting passive capital-induced market inefficiencies, even the small-cap stocks that tend to under-index would be affected in the event of a genuine liquidity problem. The investors buy the good stocks in the favoured category along with the bad, and the prices of those stocks become untethered to their demonstrable value or risk. Michael Burry believes that when things go bad and investors start to sell, large chunks of every one of the 500 or 2,000 stocks in the index will have to be sold without regard to demand or discretion. The most heavily traded stocks, those that routinely have daily volume in the billions or hundreds of millions, will likely find buyers at much lower prices. The S&P 500 index bubble could burst if holders all began to panic and exit on a loss of faith in their system. The index can also stop going up or outright crash if people simply stopped contributing consistently to hold up prices. In bear markets, the price to earnings ratio can seem lower, but the market is pricing in decreased earnings in coming months and years. With 78.8% of the S&P 500 companies in the hands of other types of investors and traders, it won't be difficult for the index to go much lower. As Burry said, in the Russell 2000 index, for instance, the vast majority of stocks are lower volume, lower value traded stocks. Today, I counted 1,049 stocks that traded less than $5 million in value during the day. That's over half, and almost half of those, 456 stocks, traded less than $1 million during the day. And yet, through indexation and passive investing, hundreds of billions are linked to stocks like this. The S&P 500 is no different. The index contains the world's largest stocks, but still, 266 stocks, over half, traded under $150 million today. That sounds like a lot, but trillions of dollars in assets globally are indexed to these stocks. The theatre keeps getting more crowded, but the exit door is the same as it always was. All of this gets worse, as you get into even less liquid equity and bond markets globally. This may seem as being alarmist to some, 
Few believed Burry when he went against the housing market in 2005, but investors seem to be more inclined to listen now. But what do you guys think? What are your thoughts about passive investment being a bubble that could crash the whole stock market? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to watch our previous video on how Michael Burry predicted the 2008 housing bubble crash. And don't forget to click that subscribe button. I make videos like this every week where I uncover the secrets of money and markets. Stay tuned for the next video.